Well, moving to the next management, then that's CG Power. Well, it reported a steady set of numbers, so that's quarter three numbers. Revenues improved by around 13%, margins saw some bit of contraction. To discuss this and more, we're joined by Mr. Natarajan Srinivasan, the Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer at the company. Hi, Mr. Srinivasan, good to speak to you for the first time in 2024, and always uh, look forward to this quarterly chat with you. Well, for the last few quarters, I've been trying to get you to talk about that revenue growth guidance for the year. And I've been hinting at that, you know, pure going by mathematics, 7,500 to 8,000 crores. But you keep telling me, no, Nigel, we are sticking to 7,000 to 7,500. Now, quarter four is the best. And you're already at 5,900 crores. So will you end this year closer to around that 8,000 crore mark, point number one? And going by what is in the pipeline, what kind of a growth number are we looking at for FI25, Mr. Srinivasan? So I think uh, Q4, uh, probably we can do about 2,000 crore sales, uh, so which means you know, it will add up to close to 7,750 to 2,000. Uh, based on order book, I think uh, we can grow next year by about 20%. We can grow the top line by 20%. Okay. And on the margin parameter, Mr. Srinivasan, you will be maintaining it uh, in this vicinity of mid-teens, around 15% is doable? Yes, doable. Okay. Let's talk about, uh, you know, uh, the segmental breakup uh, then. Because in a couple of your segments, you had uh, some bit of pressure on margin because of pricing. Do you think now you can take some price increases? And what's your strategy going ahead? Because you garnered some market share, but pricing was under pressure. So your view out there. No, pricing is under pressure, was, uh, came under pressure only in LT Motors. Yes, LT Motors. So LT Motors, you know, I have to give you some details. For uh, last two, two years, 21, 22, and 22, 23, the industry LT Motors grew by about 20% plus. Uh, for the current year, uh, till October, uh, the growth is, uh, industry growth is about 10.8%. Whereas during the same period, we have grown uh, by about 28% all these in uh, volume terms. So in uh, Q3, what happened, you know, there has been a, a, a big uh, sell-off by competition. We took a strategy call. Uh, uh, to set, to aggressively sell and then uh, re retain the customers and then protect our turf. See, in that process, our market share, uh, which was at 34% as of March 2023 in LT Motors, has gone up to about 38% as of October. Uh, so that, is, that explains the uh, uh, the reason for the, uh, the pressure in LT Motors. Look, here again, you know, there are two segments in LT Motors, you know, there is a direct order flow from the OEMs to whom we supply. That order book uh, uh, continues to remain strong. Then with right. respect to the, right. the dealers, dealers actually, you know, where the stocking is coming down because there's an expectation because the commodity prices have been seeing a decline, both copper, steel, etc. But nobody wants to stock more because if the price goes down, there will be an inventory hit. I briefly explained this in the last quarter. I feel the worst is over from Q4. Martins can definitely improve. All right, uh, Mr. Srinivasan, uh, good morning, Prashantia. Sorry, just an uh, amateur question. LT uh, Motors is uh, what? Low what tension motors, say? low tension motors. Low tension. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and uh, use mainly for, sir, end use? Uh, so, so, industrial purpose, high tension motors is actually what is called as large industrial motors, which goes into project applications like water, okay. wastewater, and uh, both industrial application. That, that growth remains strong. Okay, all right. So the low tension motors is where there has been uh, some uh, pressure on pricing, especially. Uh, Mr. Srinivasan, uh, just talk to us a little bit about the power segment, sir, uh, which has seen some uh, uptake. And generally, there is a fair bit of optimism that uh, every day we hear, uh, we read a new report uh, or two talking about how this sector has entered a new capex phase, demand is strong, but new uh, supply is hard to come by. So the entire value chain on the power side will see fresh investments. Are you seeing that in your business? Uh, can, uh, talk to us about that. No, no, absolutely. You know, the both the transformers which gear and allied products uh, continue to grow strong. You know, the order book has uh, continued to be very healthy, and also as I said, you know, inquiries, inquiries continue to be about uh, in transformers. Still, we have about close to ten thousand crores of inquiries, of which uh, at least about two thousand crores will be decided in the next quarter. In switchgear, uh, the uh, the uh, order, the inquiries are around 2,000 crores. Uh, this quarter, actually, in the power segment between uh, switchgear and transformer, we exported about 100 crores for the year. For the nine months period, we've exported more than three, uh, close to about 400 crores. We've exported. Export demand is also strong. 
uh, as I said earlier, there's definitely a supply constraint. We are uh, trying to get our capacities, uh, the increased capacity expansion up and running as early as possible. Okay. Uh, Mr. Srinivasan, hi, good morning. You know, you said that in FY24, the margins will be in mid-teens. But I also understand that you've initiated a project, Mudra, to improve, uh, you know, for cost-cutting uh, initiatives, whether it is cost reduction, vendor consolidation, capacity building as well. I want to understand how much could the benefits of this be, both in FY24, FY25? What are we looking at in terms of cost reduction and impact on margins? So I think it will be difficult to quantify exactly, you know, so we are, how much margins will get in terms of percentage. If you take power, for example, in all these, you know, we get market-related prices. I don't get a, an extra price. Whatever margin improvement I have, we have been able to bring in mainly because of Project Mudra, which is like a procurement efficiency. And as I said earlier, we are now cash surplus. Therefore, we are able to pay cash and then get the best terms for uh, procurement. We are also working on uh, the lean manufacturing with the Japanese firm for the last three years. That has also started kicking in. I, I would say about at least about uh, one and a half to two percent cumulatively. The benefit on account of this will get reflected in the bottom line. Okay. I just wanted to also come back to in the industrial system space, right? There are a few higher end customers that have started moving towards this IE4 motors as well, both in India as well as in Europe. Just trying to understand that once your new capacities come on board over the next one to two years, how much of a focus area will exports be for you? And you spoke about the top overall top line growth of 20% in FY25. How much do you think over the next two years could be contributed by exports once the capacity comes on board? So target is to move at least to 20% of the motor sales uh, into exports. I think this will happen over either in two years or three years. We have already started working on it very seriously and aggressively. So next year, at least we must uh, do about 7 and to 10% of sales uh, in motor export markets. Uh, sorry, you said 20% of your motor sales will come from exports by when? By FY25, is it? By about uh, minimum two years or maximum three years. Two to three years depends on how we progress well in the effort. Okay, all right. Uh... Mr. Srinivasan, tell us about this application you've made for setting up an OSAT uh, facility. You know, I believe that you're in discussions with various listed foreign players as well. So could you give us some guidelines by when could we hear uh, firmer plans on this front? And since you're already in talks, I believe, by when could we uh, hear more about this? So one, uh, first is, you know, the application has to be cleared by the government, both for the project as well as for the subsidies. You know, this uh, project uh, is eligible for 50% central government subsidy and 25% state government subsidy, capital subsidy, which means about 75% of the project cost will be funded uh, through, uh, uh, through the capital subsidies. Uh, so the discussions with the uh, foreign players or uh, technology providers are on. They, since they are also listed, they need to get their approval. And currently, there are some, there's amount of confidentiality. Once uh, these are cleared, maybe in about uh, by end of uh, February, I think we should be in a position to uh, tell something uh, clearly. Mm. Uh, just a quick word on the railway segment as well. What is the kind of opportunity that you have right now? You did mention earlier that you're working on several partnerships to fill the gaps in your portfolio with respect to the railway segment. We're just trying to understand over the next one to two years, what could the size of the opportunity be for you? So currently, uh, uh, some of the project orders have taken a, a breather, actually. Maybe the project orders will come only after the elections are over. Uh, but on our current pr uh, products, actually, we have got very good orders this year. The unexecuted order book is about 1,050 crores as of December. We hope to end the year with the best ever order book position as far as railways is concerned, because uh, uh, we have been quoting aggressively in the tenders and getting a lot of orders. Uh, so going forward, still, you know, as long as we uh, we are not able to get a tie up, our ability to get project orders are uh, restricted. But uh, there is a lot of work that is going on. Hmm. All right, uh, we leave it at that, Mr. Srinivasan. Thanks a lot for stopping by. Always the nice uh, listening to you and understanding more about your uh, you know multifaceted business. Thanks a lot for joining us.